Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Total War Three Kingdoms. So, uh, where we left off, I kind of vaguely remember we had two armies that were in the process of recuperating, recruiting, all that sort of jazz, and we were making a decent amount of cash so that we can build up our empire infrastructure so that we can support another army. I think we could get another army right now, but we would spend an awful lot of money on it. I have a Grand Excellency post open, which uh, would oversee some development and stuff like that, but I'm not sure who I should do it, who I should give this. Tian Kai might not. Tian, Tian Kai might be a good person to do it um, because he would be. Um, <clears throat> he, he would get a lot of satisfaction and he would give me the 15% income from industry faction wide. And he's relatively loyal. So I think he might not be a terrible person to assign to this role. Of course, he will be. Uh, he, he's employed as an assignee. I believe he's a spy right now for me. That will cost me a little bit of money, but I'm hoping that in the long run that will have some benefits. Uh, now we could start doing some upgrades. Um, for example, Yubei Ping over here. I uh, could get this upgrade here, which would give me a little bit of commerce income, uh, which I am taking benefits from. Now I would like to perhaps, if I look at this building, I'd like to find another building that gives me commerce income. And this might end up becoming uh, something else. But for now, we're going to leave it as this industry building. I think it is a state workshop, right? Because we can use that to just generate a little bit of raw income for our empire. We could upgrade this and it would have a significant impact here. Uh, this would go up to a 25% boost in income from commerce. It would also give me some trade influence. So I think that would not be a bad thing to boost. So I think we will go ahead and buy that right there so let's go ahead and go to the next turn and we'll get started on going after these guys now i'm just double checking who i'm at war with this guy over here is this you see here this is dong dong min now he has a vassal in the han empire and i think it's time we go after don min He's pretty strong, but he's about the same strength as me. And if we can get a good bit of um, a bit of a drop on him by attacking him here, I think that could go pretty well. But what is your problem? You're pretty upset. So could I give you anything that would improve your satisfaction? It doesn't really look like it. There's a bit of satisfaction there. You could use expertise and satisfaction. Sure thing. I'll equip that. That'll make you a little bit happier. I'll give you a purpose someday, I promise. Um, but yeah, I want to save up a bit of cash. Let me see here. Lu Bei wants to buy my feather fan and he'll pay me a thousand dollar dues. And I will accept that. That seems pretty reasonable. Yan Xiao is probably going to try to keep... Um, I'm going to keep trying to... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Keep trying to subjugate me. But I'm hoping that I can get strong enough to fight back against him. Maybe get him to trigger a civil war um, with his vassals and stuff like that. Maybe I could trade him. I think what I'd really like to do is buy these. Buy these two uh, commanderies off him and then try to like find a way to unite my lands by buying stuff off of him. There's a bit of a, he, he's just like on a tear, dude. He's just so we need to catch up. Um, Follow the heart. This army is ready to move, but uh, I think I'm going to hold on because we're replenishing this army so I might give it another turn or two I'll give it at least one more turn because quite a few of these guys are a little bit away I'm quite happy with these Azure dragons although I think it was a little bit early in the campaign to get them but they are very powerful uh, I just I'm not very good at using them we've got an idle army we can do some upgrades let's have a look at Lao Shi uh, let's see here so this is industry this is food production Ultimately, I think in the long term, it would be good to upgrade this city. It's at its population capacity. Um, and I think eventually I would like to replace this with a thing that the military government. I think it's better to specialize your areas. So I might demolish this. Um, I should have plenty of food to feed my people. Now, did I remember... Um, over here to upgrade this farmland. It's in the process of upgrading, so I think it's safe to go in here 
and uh, demolish this. And I'll just do it instantly so I can get that going. Oh, did I forget that this needs to be level 4? I did. So what other industrial stuff can I build? I can't build anything until it's level 4. Whoops. Well, let's go ahead and get that upgrading. That was a bit of a mistake. Not a huge big deal in the long run, but you know. Stability requires he wants me to be his vassal. I'm going to reject that. His attitude to me is quite positive. But I will reject that. So I don't want to be... I do not want to be um, his vassal. <clears throat> no way, no shape, no form. But we will be going to over Don, Don Ming. And I probably will be... Uh, pillaging this town to knock it down a level. So... Lu Bu took over. Uh-oh. Hong Long and Yan Shao. Peace Treaty. Peace through conquest. Marching. We'll get that war going. We've got quite a bit of upgrades going on. Action Council. Let's invoke the council. Construct a building from the settlement administration. Okay. Or assign a character to the Grand Commandant. You know what might be good? It might be good to start hiring more people. Um, I'd like to get a green guy. Qi Chi Shang. Might be a good guy to grab here. Let's grab him. And let's put Gu Yang in this position. It will make him very satisfied. And it will give me a 10% recruitment cost across my empire. And we have some disagreements inside of our uh, uh, country. But I think that's going to be okay. Because that will give me extra satisfaction and support from the nob nobility. Which will give me peasantry and commander satisfaction. So we'll be declaring war on uh, this guy soon, I think. Go ahead and negotiate. Lu Bu. Keep this brief. So we'll probably declare war next turn. So I'm going to give this army one more turn to replenish, and then uh, we'll get moving. Die could use some upgrades. It's got an empty thing here. Yan Men is having some public order problems. Why are you having public order problems? Part of it is your reserves are depleted. See, there's a building in here causing that, and that is the Rural County Administration. Ah, the food trader is also causing me a food problem. I'm going to downgrade that so that I have a little bit more food. I like having a surplus of food over selling food. Big surpluses seem to be pretty good to me. Um, I could go ahead and pick up the G infantry, which are a decent upgrade, which would lead on to the heavy G infantry, which are a pretty big upgrade. Um, or I, I think I was planning on moving down towards uh, the yellow dragons, maybe. Uh, but I'm not sure. There was something up here that I wanted. Can't remember what it is. Corruption, public order. Public order would be really, really nice. Um... So I want to pick up the five punishments here. That's going to give me a bit of public order throughout my empire, which will hopefully help uh, stabilize things. Yubei Ping has some upgrades. A bit of a food shortage in here. We could get the merchant registry office, which would give me a bit of commerce income boost. Another 25% and a little bit more trade influence. Um... I think I'd like to upgrade both of these. So I'm going to build up this city a little bit over time. We'll keep that going. I'm going to try to be building up my empire. And we're going to be getting to go to war uh, here next turn. So let's go ahead and go to the next turn. We'll get these two guys moving out. Yan Shu is... Not sure where Yan Shu is. I think he's over here. He wants to trade ancillaries for non-aggression pact. I'll accept that we to uh, try and improve our relations with him. And just like keep down the possibility that someone wants to declare war on me. Uh, because I don't really have the army to defend my lands. 
Okay, so this was the turn that we declare the war. I Maybe it was last turn? I can't remember exactly. Anyway, so let's go to... Let's go ahead into diplomacy. And we will negotiate with Lu Bu. We thought you dead. We're going to declare war on him. Lu Dai, Wang Lang, and Lao Zhu Meng will be happier with me. I am worth one thousand. Do your worst. The war has been declared, and we shall get moving. Nurture passion. Head that way. This will upset Zhang Yang, but it'll get me over here to this fishing port in a reasonable amount of time. Now, I know I'm trespassing, but it's kind of it was necessary for me to do that. Now, I believe there was a city up here. Am I still building in Laoshi? I am. Okay. And Ping now has a massive food surplus, which is exactly what we were hoping for. Um, it would be good to pick up a military government in here to uh, keep the population in line, because it is going to keep growing. So we could do that. Uh, let's see. Oh, we can inspect the garrison directly. Oh, okay. That's cool. I did not know that we could do that. We have all the food kind of style buildings. And a military government here to me, because it gives prestige, I, I want to build it in as many places as possible. So we'll pop that in there. We have a little bit of money yet left over. I could improve Dai, for example. Uh, we could improve the Confucian Temple. Would be a bit of public order. See, what is this? This is a sort of militarized area. This could be where we recruit things. I think that would be pretty okay. I could go ahead and get conscription in here, which would hurt the population growth, which is, but it would make uh, recruiting here more effective. Alternatively, I could build some military infrastructure. Starting rank for cavalry recruits is very interesting to me there. The White Horse Fellows raiding parties. That would be pretty cool to build up. But I kind of want to maybe, maybe I want to build this up as like a military recruitment part place to get all of our horse units. So I think we would start with... Um, conscription over here and this is where we would recruit our armies for marching out onto the field so we'll go ahead and get conscription in here that will lower the population growth rate but that's fine um and we will want to build up the city eventually we're up to a fairly good food surplus i definitely need more food um in order to keep sort of growing the verticality of my empire we've got an empty thing over here we could probably get away with a tax collector um, but this city just in general needs to be upgraded to level four. I feel like level four is like when a city starts becoming useful. Anyway, let's go to the next turn. For your consideration. Cao Cao wants to form a coalition. I'm going to reject that because I believe he's at Very war with someone that I don't want to be at war with. The Han Empire, who I'm at war with. Wait, why am I at war with Yan Shuao? Oh, shoot. He declared war me. It finally happened. Well, let's raise an army. Who am I going to get here? He Shang for. Let's get this guy raised. Bend. Do not break. And we will recruit to this army. Let's see, we could get peasant bands. They're very, very weak. Peasant bands are very, very weak, um, but they are cheap, and that is kind of what we're hoping for. They have very low. They have actually a pretty decent, like, compared to spear warriors. Like, if we right-click spear warriors and hover over peasant bands, 
the only main the main difference here is that um spear warriors have quite a bit more armor to see the land with life. whereas peasant bands have good melee evasion and fairly similar attack they just have a, a way worse charge bonus as far as i can tell I don't want to right click anymore so they're good at like holding a holding the line um i think we might get some peasant bands these guys don't have shields might save up for spear guards i feel like those are better uh, and we're going to be in for a rough time because we do not have very good garrisons on the border. Question is, do I continue here and try to take out these cities? I could sack them and then retreat. This is what you train for. Unleash fury. Yeah, I think I'm going to sack these. Spread in all directions. And try to... I think I'm going to try to sack this city to take the money. And then I'm going to bring this army back to try to fight. To now, this is my ca mostly cavalry army from what I remember. But something to keep in mind. So we have to try and destroy Yuan Shao. This is going to be a very, very challenging war because our empires are very intertwined. Um, I'm very scared that I'm going to start losing cities very quickly against this guy. In particular, I'm worried about losing my breadbasket over here, which is not very secure. But I do have an army marching back, and I'm in the process of recruiting an army to go take we out these areas to the fearless. north. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Our talks flowed as smoothly as the river. <clears throat> Currently in a little bit of a rough position. So since I'm at war with this guy, what I might want to do... An enemy master driver news. One of your generals allows himself to be captured. God damn it. 500 ducats. Let fury explode and okay. It says we're like super hardcore ahead. And it's a very small garrison. So I'm just going to delegate this. Fight with utter belief and you will be undefeatable. And we're going to sack this for money. Leave nothing of value. And we're going to use that money to recruit an army to uh, fight Ash, against him. So that actually that actually kind of worked out okay-ish for me. Um, I mean, obviously it's not ideal. Uh, but we need to get back Don't over try. to here. I'd like to clean up these things. And I'd like to maybe approach and see if I can take out some of the copper mines and stuff. That's like fueling his economy. And start kind of stripping away In his stuff. Ending. We are reminded so I think we're going to get a couple of spear guards. And then we're going to recruit a... Maybe an archery guy. Ah, there'd be a bit of disharmony there. Maybe we'll get a... One of these guys? A yellowy guy? This guy is pretty cheap. I'm going to take Tian Kai. And get him to join this army. Because these guys don't have any conflict. Remain and he's got mounted saber militia and saber militia and we're going to prioritize getting uh more of those mounted saber militia and saber militia i think what is the difference between these i'm going to go for cheaper armies in this early phase it could be worth it to get another one of these guys and get a couple of archers But no, we'll think about that. We might do that next turn. But these guys are going to be recruiting for a while. I'm hoping that this is enough to take on some of this stuff. Um, there's a lot. I, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to need a ranged component to this army. So I feel like I need to recruit this guy. There is cunning in caution. So that's, that's, this is a decently sized army. It'll be done mustering in a few turns. Uh, it shouldn't take more than three turns to fully muster, and then we can go in for Yun Man. And I think um, if we manage our empire correctly and get some loot, we should be able to take out this copper mine, for example. 
and I'm genuinely tempted to send this guy down to here first, but he's kind of out of kind of out of um, units, and these these things are pretty heavily defended from what I remember, so I might leave that be. The level seven city over there, that's going to be a tough nut to crack, and he's already hitting out with a rather large army. We're going to have a hard time holding that one off. You, ha you want to give me a bit of money, I will happily take your money, Kong Rong. Wisdom met by wisdom. I definitely, definitely need more, uh, more cash just to buy me time to get my military strength up. If I could knock out a couple of his cities, these smaller settlements, and uh, starve him out a little bit, that would be good. Let me go ahead and see, can I do a little bit of diplomacy here? If we look at Yan Shao, he's got a bunch of vassals, like Yan Shu. What if I were to negotiate with you? Help each other? No, I don't want to declare war on you. Sorry, Yan Shu. Can I maybe convince you? Come, let us talk. Support? Uh, can I support your independence? So be it. What about Zhang Yang? What if I were to support this your independence? You don't like that. Okay, Kong Rong. What if I were to try Our to support pleasure. your independence? Okay, you're not happy about that. Lu Dai. Our patience is thin. What about Lu Dai? What if I were to support yes, yes. your independence? Talk. You don't want to talk to me at all because we're at war. What about Lu Zhang? Let us talk. You don't want to. Well, Lu Bei. Glad tidings to you. What if you formed a coalition and you gave me a little bit of cash just to fuel my economy? Just like, give me like, give me like 1,500. Maybe a little bit more. We are in agreement. So I'm in, a, I'm, a, I'm in a coalition with Liu Bei now. And I'm hoping that I can convince him. Welcome, friend. Against, uh... Select faction. I don't know, maybe a coalition is a dangerous thing to do, but it'll give me some vision, maybe. Maybe he'll be willing to join me and defend me. I can't tell who he's at war with. Liu Bei is already at war with Yan Xiao, so this is actually really good, because now Yan Xiao has to worry about a bunch of new people. But Lan, do you want to be independent? Stay to your business. I would love to support your independence, but it seems like you're a bootlicker. <laughs> Tao Tao. Buddy. Uh... Negotiate. To unite China, communication must be open. I want you to join. You don't think he's respectful enough? Respectable enough? Nah. I would love to get more people into this. Not you again. Okay, he doesn't want to join. Okay. Well, I guess I could maybe con I could probably convince him Let of joining my coalition. Cancel. Hold on. Can I put like? Negotiate, we speak? make payment. Ah, uh, you can't pay someone to join your alliance. Got it. Okay, well, we've got a coalition going, which is really good. And the question is, do we try to fight this army? They're out of supply. I'm in supply. I mean, 
if we don't do something about it, we're just going to be trading cities, which is really bad. I could hit Hei Dong next turn. I could hit it this turn, actually. Let's have a look. Get to here. We could we could loot this this place. We could sack it as well. Um, I'm not gonna fight this battle. It's a lot of melee infantry, a lot of melee cavalry. Yeah, let's fight it. Let's see what we can do. I was gonna delegate it, but I'm gonna try to fight this myself. It is a blessed day for war. Let us fight. This war will be won by our combined strength. I, I kind of wish I had a siege engine in this army now. A trebuchet would make a big difference in, in being able to take down the um the cold bites at us. The towers. Yet we must march. Now, my friends, to war for China. Okay, let's have a look. Let's analyze this location. Okay, so the best doorway to attack is this doorway. Um, because th these two will overlap fire with each other. This one actually overlaps with that other one. Quite a bit. Oh, it's going to make my life miserable if I come up through here. Um, okay, what do we do? There's no real angle to come from that gives us a significant advantage as far as I can tell. These two overlap. The best one is this one here because we would take less attritional damage on the approach, but we take a hell of a lot from these towers firing at us. Although the angle is probably sufficient that they wouldn't be able to shoot through this. So I think this is the best uh, place to assault over here. Uh, there's a couple of options I want to hit here. For example, I'd like to see character, not character auras, but I'd like to see... Uh, occlusion out not occlusion outlines I want to see um, unit details and unit threat level and I want to see unit portraits um, so I can kind of make better decisions about what I do actually unit portraits I'm less enamored with I don't need the portraits but it's good to have this little bit of extra information to see how fresh and healthy a unit is at a glance. I think there's another thing over here. I want to put on hide foliage. What this does is when I'm near trees, for example, it's kind of hard to tell because these are like um, forested or winter trees. But if I zoom in here, you'll see the foliage kind of disappears, which will make my life a little bit easier in those forested battles. You'll remember, I was having some trouble. I think there's another um, option in here somewhere. There's a control, there's camera, interface. I want to turn off default skirmish and I want to turn on default guard mode as well. So what skirmish does is when skirmish is on, your units will run away. And uh, what guard mode does is it stops your units running off and chasing things. And that's exactly how I want my archers to behave because I, I was having this trouble and it was mostly down to like a, I didn't understand the UI very well. Uh, my units were like running off and doing things that I didn't want them to. So I believe I can also hold alt and like drag this around as an army if I wanted to. I can do stuff like this and rotate my entire army to be set up to attack this area here. So, we're going to be attacking through here. Um, we're probably going to be sending in my assault infantry first. Who has the better shield? You're both pretty weak in the shield. Oh, these guys, the Saber Militia have slightly better shields. These guys use slightly more damage as far as I can tell. Yeah. So these guys are definitely going to go first because they have better uh, block chance. So I'm going to take two of these guys and line them up right there. And then I'm going to take these two guys, line them up behind. Excuse me. Like so. We'll take our Assault Infantry in between. And we'll grab all of our archers. Have them lined up behind. Preferably double... Can I get a double deep formation? I think what I can do is... 
this. Like so. So we've got our assault column. We've got some G infantry. You're mostly going to be hanging out because you don't have any shield at all. So you'll get ripped apart by those. We have our cavalry. Let's see horse, horse archers. And what we're going to do with our cavalry is likely try to charge. Probably going to use our cavalry to send around to the other um, doorways. The other entrances and see if we can maybe get in here and capture these towers if i could capture even just this tower maybe this tower as well i'd be very happy so what i'm going to do is going to set up my cavalry uh right here in this forest hopefully where they're not seen and they're concealed so they won't know that i'm coming and we'll set up for an assault on this position right here let's have a look Okay, yeah, they've got a little bit of lightsaber infantry and stuff like that. The cavalry is very vulnerable to archer fire. So what we're going to do is grab this whole section and march them up as a unit to there. And once we're in range of the tower, we'll start running. Uh, my cavalry will get themselves over here. If they abandon these towers, I'll, mar I'll march in and try and take them. My G infantry are going to hang out in the trees. Alright, so I think that's everyone giving their orders. Let's go ahead and assault. Yep, we've been spotted. Are we taking arrow fire yet? Once we, once I start seeing arrow fire hitting these guys, I will, uh, I'll start the running. But I think we have a little bit of a hill dip here that's going to provide us with some cover. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. We have this forest cover that we can use to approach. Our men are spotted. Okay, we're spotted. We're starting to take hits. Run. Let's get our two generals going in. Their job is to straight up attack. Your job is to straight up attack. And your job is to prevent reinforcements. Although, hold on. I want you guys to... Yeah, do that. So I want you to do the Roar of the Beast. And I want you to do... Doing all the good stuff. Okay, our first swords infantry are going in. Breaking them. Awesome. Push these forward a little bit. We're going to take heavy losses in here, but that's fairly normal. We're flipping these towers, which is really important. I can't tell if we're taking shots from this tower. Halt. Halt, stop. I can't tell if they're shooting. Okay, we've taken over this tower. They're still holding the other ones. Go help. Right, you guys, you've done your job. Retreat. Second line of infantry. Get in. Keep it up, that's right. Get in and help. Okay, you've got your passive buffs going. That's good. I know I've got a little bit of chaos, chaotic moment going on here, but I think it's going to be okay in the long run. Make sure you do your Scream of the Dragon. Okay. I need you guys to get out of there. Okay, 
Can you shoot those? Where are my where are my other two swordsmen? I need you guys to get in there. I'm gonna get these archers to just back up a little bit because they're causing a bit of a traffic jam. These guys are doing their best. They're doing a really good job, I will say. My god, archers. <laughs> Fall back! They now hit that guy as the other two swords get him. I want to bring these guys back so they don't take too many casualties so they can heal up a little bit quicker. All right, and they've abandoned that tower. So we're going to use our cavalry uh, to take on these saber militia. And we're going to use our cavalry archers to take this tower. Get in there. Make a fight happen. Let's get our other assault infantry in. The enemy unit flees. What cowards? All right, this is some good shots happening. I'm gonna get you to flee. I want you to fire there. Let's see, can you guys absorb this charge? You did pretty well. Archers, I'm gonna get you to change targets. There's a much juicier target over there. Yes, yes. Yeah, we own those towers now. Go ahead and get into melee combat with these guys. Right, they're fleeing. Excellent. So I think we're winning this without taking too many casualties. We're kind of out in the front here. I need you into the fight. All right, let's use your dragon call here when you're in melee. Make them panic. All right, we've taken over all the towers, so attrition damage shouldn't be a thing anymore. Let's get you to chase these down. We want to get as many prisoners as we can. The enemy warriors are running. Ah. Nice, we did it. And I don't think we took too heavy casualties except for on our cavalry, which is not a big deal. Our cavalry took pretty bad casualties, but we really wanted to preserve our infantry as much as possible here. Um, and by spreading out the hits, I think overall my army will recover faster. Cavalry took, took pretty bad damage, I will admit that. But uh, I think my generals also took a decent amount of damage. Now, the question here is... Is a, is a really prudent question. Do we... Um, Reason can be yeah, we only lost 400 men, which is a really good kill. The question is, do we loot and occupy and use that income to fuel our army, even if the settlement is, like, pounded to oblivion? Or... Do we just occupy it? I think we loot and occupy this for the extra cash um, to cut him off from his cash flow. Sure enough, I'll have to repair it, but it's only 300 to repair. We cut off a bit of his cash flow. We gain some money to fuel this army up here. And in fact, I'm really tempted to get a couple of Azir dragons in here. It's really expensive, though. Um... You know what I am going to get? I'm going to get a trebuchet. I'm going to get like a trebuchet. In this army. We have plenty of cash. Unfortunately, this city is going to be under major assault here. But I think we'll be able to attrition this army down to a point where this army can come and reinforce. Um, who is this? The Yellow Turban Rebellion? I'm just going to let you be, dude. You're doing a great job. So we could spend our money, but I think I'm going to hold on to this money to, uh, keep fueling this. But we're, we're in a, we're in a, we're in like the game deciding war, I feel like right here. Everything we've been doing has been building up to the showdown with Yan Shao. So. 
The real question is, what do I do with this army? I feel like I have to go meet this army. Um, or I could bring this army down, but this army is mustering for another couple of turns. The trebuchets aren't important. So I could probably move the turn after, but it's likely this city goes under siege this turn. So I'm going to call that the end of the episode, and we'll check that out next time. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.